So my original plan for this video was to take Lomography 800 and Portrait 800, two really popular color negative films, both 800 ISO, and put the two films against each other and shoot the same thing side by side. That way we could get a really good comparison of the two. That's probably one of the most requested videos that I've had recently, ever since I started shooting a lot of Lomography 800. A lot of people want to know how it fares against Portrait 800. And I went out and shot that video, and pretty much everything fell apart. So I am still going to make that video, but I thought it would be fun just to kind of share some of the behind the scenes and how everything went wrong, but I'm not really that upset by it. I also think with everything going on in the world right now, a lot of people are kind of scared and very concerned, and rightfully so. I hope you guys are all staying safe and taking the necessary precautions that you need to, but I thought if there's anything I can do right now, at least just to provide some sort of entertainment or escape from all of the paranoia and just chaos that's going on in the world right now, so uh, grab a cup of coffee, cup of tea, whatever it is you want, and uh, let's just kind of talk about this. I started shooting a lot of Lomography 800 film last year, and it's been about a year now that I've been consistently shooting that film in a lot of different situations, and I've had a few mixed results uh, with light leaks and things like that on some of the rolls based on the paper backing that the film uses. Um, if you've shot Lomography 800 in 120, you've probably experienced this. I've personally never shot it in 35 millimeter, but I would imagine you wouldn't really run into that issue since it's not, you know, a paper roll. It's just in a traditional canister. So that's really been my only issue or complaint with Lomography 800. A lot of people have been asking what it's like compared to Portra 800 because Portra 400 is probably the most popular color negative film out there. Everybody shoots it. Everybody knows what it's like. Um, but Portra 800 is considerably uh, more expensive than Portra 400. So a lot of people kind of stay away from it, but people were curious, you know, is it worth the extra money, especially compared to Lomography 800 itself? So I took one roll of each film and I borrowed a Hasselblad 500C from Midwest Photo. If you watched the recent vlog where I went up there and uh, picked up some stuff and stocked up on film, you saw that in the video there and they let me borrow this for the sake of making this video. That way I had a camera with interchangeable backs so I could have one loaded with Lomography and one loaded with Portra and I could just keep the camera on the tripod, shoot the same thing, two different frames, and that way we would have a really good consistent comparison. So my buddy Matt Seal and his friend Addy, they drove down to Chillicothe for the day, and Matt basically helped out and helped film the video for me as I was actually out there shooting. And it was a lot of fun. We went out there and made a lot of different photos, but right from the very start, things started falling apart, uh, quite literally. The Hasselblad 500C and both film backs that I borrowed from Midwest Photo were untested. They were in the inventory to be tested before they were put out on the shelves, but I went ahead and just took a gamble. I thought, eh, they're probably fine. Um, that was mistake number one. While loading the Portrait 800 roll, I'm not sure what went wrong. I have loaded a Hasselblad 120 back hundreds and hundreds of times over the years, but for some reason, something went wrong here and it ripped the film in half completely. So the paper backing and the film itself were ripped and I basically had a wasted roll. I hadn't shot any photos yet, but there was no way for me to continue using that same roll. And so I just kind of went with it. I had a little bit of fun and, uh, you know, just unrolled the entire roll of film and put up a little clip on Instagram talking about how this was a, uh, a secret technique, you know, which I was obviously kidding, but a couple of people uh, were kind of confused and they're like, wait, is this, is this for real? But I was completely kidding, obviously. So the best thing to do with Portra 800 is if you rip it right as you start to see this, uh, kind of looks like a barcode, and then you unwind it, and this is where you can actually see the film. And the best part about that is it kind of, it pre-lights the film a little bit. So you get sort of a more organic, um, natural kind of look. I mean, that's why people prefer film is for the imperfections anyway. And so if you unwrap it like this and you just kind of hold it up and get good. I'm kind of in the shade, so that it's probably not going to affect it that much. But if it was like sunny out, you could get really good shots, um, kind of pre pre-lighting uh, the film. Don't ever unwrap your film in daylight like that. That will not give you good results. It won't give you any results at all. You'll ruin the film. So uh, we went back to the office. I picked up another roll of Portrait 800, and then we went back out to keep shooting. I wasn't too stressed about it. I thought, whatever, one roll of film wasted. That's a bummer, but not that big of a deal. Let's just keep shooting. So we walked all over Chillicothe. I shot a bunch of different photos side by side in various lighting conditions. 
really excited to get the film back. And then I got a text from Joe from the dark room about a week later as I was expecting my film scans. And he was like, hey, just to give you a heads up, you've got scans coming to you today, but it looks like there was something lodged inside the camera on one of these rolls because there's this big piece of something blocking the entire frame, basically. And this was actually on a roll of Lomography 800. So I loaded Lomography 800 in the back that ripped the first roll of Portrait 800. So that way, if it did happen again, I also had other rolls of Lomography 800, but I was down to my last roll of Portrait 800. So I thought if it rips the film again, I at least know it's not ripping my last roll of Portrait 800. It's very confusing trying to keep all of this straight. This turned out to be part of the light seal in one of the film backs, so it looks like something had gone wrong and possibly that's what ripped it because it was a piece of metal, like a really thin, almost like sheet metal, and that's what ripped the film and that's what got stuck in the film back and I had no idea. So at this point, I just kind of laughed and I thought, well, at least we'll get a good look at the Portrait 800 scans in the other film back. And turns out that film back has a lot of light leak issues. So not in all of the photos, but the majority of the photos, there are pretty significant light leaks. And when you have light leaks like this, this can definitely affect the color in the scene and the color that you get out of that film because you're giving it, you know, uneven amounts of light throughout the frame. It can cause color shifts. It's just not a good way to test out the film and get a really good representation of what you can get out of it. So I spent money on the film itself, three rolls of 120, uh, on the postage to get the film to the darkroom, I spent money on the processing and scanning from the darkroom, and essentially I came back with nothing. A few photos that weren't ruined by the either light leaks or the piece of metal that was blocking the frame, a few photos that I'm just okay happy with, um, but nothing really groundbreaking obviously, nothing I was really excited about. Matt and Addie, they came down for the day and Matt was there to help me film this video and I was really excited to put together like a really good comparison video for you guys and pretty much all of it fell apart. So I spent all this money, all this time, and I had no idea that there was any issue with these film backs. I knew that the first issue happened, but after that I thought, okay, well it ripped that one roll of film, but as far as I know, everything is working fine now. I had no idea the other film back had light leaks, I wasn't expecting any of this, and all of that time had gone by, whereas I have two Canon EOS R bodies, uh, plenty of different RF lenses that are all amazing. So I have two very capable digital cameras, all of these lenses. Why do I spend the time and money on film whenever these kind of things can happen? Whereas if I was just out shooting you know, digitally, I would know immediately if there was an issue and I could see my results. So why do we spend so much time and energy and money on film. And I think the majority of you here following this channel, you guys are all film shooters. So you immediately, I feel like you probably just get it. You understand why we spend the time and the money with this kind of process where you can potentially run into these kind of issues. It's not likely, I'll be honest, the times that I've had light leak issues or film backs not working properly or something getting lodged in the camera. It's happened very, very, very few times in the last 15, 16 years that I've been doing this. But there still is the possibility of stuff like this happening and you not having any idea until, you know, weeks later. Overall, I think it's just a small price to pay for the enjoyment that I get out of shooting film. And I think a lot of you guys watching this channel and this video specifically, you probably relate to that as well. I would say most people that shoot film regularly, they probably have some kind of story where a film roll came back blank because it wasn't loaded properly or or there was light leaks, or there might have been some kind of issue that you weren't really expecting, but after that happened, you continued to keep shooting film. And I think it just comes down to the shooting experience. I personally love shooting with a variety of different cameras and different focal lengths and aspect ratios and even film stocks. There's a lot of variety there in film photography that you just simply don't have as much in the digital world. And obviously I'm not against digital, like I mentioned, I have a pretty good amount of money invested into my current digital setup and I cannot wait until the new Canon R5 comes out. I'm not gonna lie, I'm really excited about that camera. But even with the issues that I had trying to make this comparison video, I still am glad that I went out there and made the photos and took time to do it. It was great walking around town with Matt and Addie and just shooting photos and having a good time, and it was fun for me just to learn from all of this, in all honesty. I mean, now, obviously, I wish I would have grabbed a camera that had been tested, but still, at the same time, it was a lesson to be learned. As a matter of fact, I was talking to Matt about this video and how everything just fell apart, but I still wanted to kind of just share the experience. He said that, 
one thing his mom always told him growing up, if something went wrong, she would just say, well, now you have a story to tell. And I think a lot of film shooters can relate to that because when things do go wrong, it's usually pretty unexpected. But again, it's a story to tell. So I do want to give Lomography 800 and Portrait 800 an honest comparison where I'm shooting the films and nothing goes wrong. So I'm not going to go off of just what I had today because, again, light leaks and things like that, that can drastically change the color and overall results. So I will continue to work on this and make a proper comparison between the two. You can expect that sometime in the near future. But that's it for today. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you got some kind of, you know, entertainment, a laugh, and just overall just an escape from all of the the chaos and paranoia and just stress and worry that's going on in the world right now. So again, I hope you guys are staying safe. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. We've got new videos every Monday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, but that's it for today. So thank you guys for everything. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. How we spent time making this video, and then this has ended up what happening. What did I just say? <laughs>